target. So how do we monitor and evaluate food intake in a hospital setting? This is a, a, a nutrition monitoring form that we use. This is initiated by the dietitian and monitored by the nurse at the bedside. It is so important for them to look at what the patient has eaten and noted down as to whether it is nil, quarter, half, three fourth, or full, full plate. According to their visual judgment, they will be noting it down. And the next day when the dietitian goes, she will calculate and put the approximate calorie and protein and related to the patient's requirement. And if need be, she can intervene and make her care plan changes on a daily basis. So whom do you think we will initiate uh, monitoring? Patients who are severely malnourished on admission, patients who are critically ill. There is a transition from tube feed to oral diet. Mandate monitoring is required. Patients who have uh, who are required to have a nutrition optimization. Say, for example, a patient is waiting for transplant or a patient who is uh, who has a wasting disease. Obviously, his nutrition has to be monitored when he is in the hospital. And uh, who were requires a calorie count due to poor oral intake uh, prior to admission or as and when required. You know, it is dietitian's clinical judgment. Next route of feeding is enteral nutrition. Always we prefer to feed the patient through the tube than parenterally. So what are the criteria for selecting enteral formula? Always we choose scientific evidence-based formula. Metabolic requirements and needs have to be thought about. Medical condition of the patient, pre-existing condition and comorbidities have to be thought about before choosing a product and their GI function. If gut is very, very finicky, obviously a peptide might suit them better than a polymeric formula. And the proportion of components, whether they require a high protein or a low carb, depending on their condition, it will be, uh, you know, uh, chosen. And uh, in ICUs, uh, for all critically ill patients at large, you know, guidelines prescribe polymeric formula. But as a dietitian, I would say you have to customize it. If in case the patient has a GI issue prior to admission, you have to start them on peptide. And if in case a patient has a renal impairment, think of a disease-specific formula because guidelines always speak uh, general standard polymeric formula is perfectly okay. But in uh, practice, institution-wise, things are different. But I do find that uh, uh, choosing uh, disease-specific formulas are any day safer because you are in sync with the, the case as such, you take a deep dive into the case scenario, accordingly you prescribe. Say for example, immunomodulating uh, formulas, especially for surgical and trauma cases, not for all critically ill cases. This is a given uh, thing that you cannot use immunomodulating uh, formulas for normal critically ill patients and uh, cannot recommend formulas like hepatic and pulmonary failure products. You know, what I would suggest is for a patient who has hepatic encephalopathy, during the acute phase, I put them on a hepatic branch chain amino acid product. And once they are out of it, we get back to a polymeric feed. That's a safer bet. And uh, these are our best practices, uh, what we do in our hospital. Commercial formulas are only used. Continuous feeding uh, is given for all uh, critically ill patients to minimize interruptions. Many a times we might prescribe something and the next day when you go, you think the whole feed, what you had planned had uh, been given to the patient, but many a times you are wrong. And, uh, you know, to quote an example, you know, it was in 2011, uh, we, we uh, went for international nutrition survey. Prior to that, honestly, we were not monitoring the interruptions. That was a wake up call for us because we had to understand the interruption. So when you need to understand interruption, the nurse has to 
monitor and write why it is interrupted only when she writes it you get to know that it is interrupted otherwise it is not interrupted uh, otherwise you don't get to understand at all if she writes okay i've given all 1000 ml done done for the day you don't even know so there's a lot of education that has to happen between uh, departments from the doctor nurses dietitians all of us should be in the same sink so the protocol has to be established we have a protocolized uh, treatment plan as such and we do continuous audit audit helps us understand where we are where, where we can reach and this is the protocol that we follow we initiate enteral feeding within 48 hours that is as per uh, global guidelines but uh, to be honest i can tell you 96% of the patients get uh, as early as 6 hours once they are stabilized they put a tube start feeding that's it and formula it's a scientific based commercial formula continuous feeding method 6 hours of hang time the bags are hung for 6 hours so four times of feeding throughout the day it is poured into the bag and fed head and elevation is monitored 30 to 45 degree minimal interruption because doctors look at it dietitians look at it nurses train to minimize interruptions Un, uh, unnecessary or unavoidable uh, interruptions can be minimized and if the grv is above 250 it is escalated to the uh, consultant and withholding uh, feeds for procedures what we do is we catch up feed for the next two hours and this is a progress sheet what doctors look at early in the morning as early as seven to eight in the morning doctors start looking at uh, even enteral and parenteral how much volume has been delivered the previous day so this is a multidisciplinary monitoring chart wherein uh, dietitians also put their note as to how much of feed was given, what is the care plan that she is going to do for today. If there is a change, say for example, patient has diarrhea, she has to include a soluble fiber. She has to give a prescription for soluble fiber to be included for that day. So that note goes into this page and uh, the nurses monitor the feed and hourly rate is mentioned in this column. So wherein if there is interruption, she has to note and uh, mention as to why it was interrupted. And this is a laminar air food under which uh, feeds are prepared to ensure that it is safe for the patient. And without proper monitoring or auditing the practice, nothing is a continuous process, right? It, it can be initiated, but it can be interrupted or stopped at any time. So we do a continuous audit practice in our system, wherein uh, every month we have data collected for patients on tube feed. Uh, you know, our target is about 80% of prescribed calories to be achieved by day three, calories as well as protein. And by day five, it is 90% of the targeted uh, calorie and protein. So this is a continuous process. This is part of a quality monitor that we maintain. So day in, day out, it is looked at. And the interruptions are also noted. That is the reason uh, that helps us to intervene and talk to nurses if they are going, going wrong somewhere. And uh, it is a process that happens every day. So as a team, you know, nutrition doesn't exist uh, all alone. All of us together as healthcare professionals from different disciplines, if we come together, we'll be able to deliver better nutrition to the patient in order to combat hospital malnutrition. And uh, I'm always proud to say I am part of the team who caters to, you know, my patients and to help them uh, alleviate from hospital malnutrition. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you for the time.